So on this video lecture series, we're going to be focusing on how to write a lab report. And it's very important and it ties in with the second lecture series about science where we talked about the scientific method. Each part of the lab report is actually representing an aspect of the scientific method or a step of the scientific method. And if you understand the step scientific method, you understand how to do the lab report. And so we, I advise you to watch this lecture series in conjunction with that one. And so uh, you can make more sense about what I'm talking about. So. And also I want to introduce that there are several documents that you can use to follow along with what I've been talking about. And these are all available in links down below in the description and as well as on my website. But the first document is the lab report explanation. And what this does is it ties in the uh, explanation about how that area of the lab report fits with the scientific method. Uh, it's very useful for anybody who's trying to write a lab report. And if you actually open your advanced notes on Nature of Science, you will see that in green throughout the notes of the Venture of Science, when I'm talking about the steps of the scientific method, you will see that the, the pieces of that will be included there. So you see, for example, when I talk about asking questions, I will have this same thing that I will have in the lab report explanation listed here in the notes that belong to that session. So as you can see, there's a direct relationship between each of the step scientific methods and then each of the parts. So in this first video, I want to talk about the just in general, the things you're going to need to be looking at and total all the parts of the lab report. So open the lab report explanation. Or maybe those, those scientific notes or the notes about science could be very useful as well. You should have read them by now. You should have known what science is and how it works. And, but this lab report explanation will tie those in to it with that. Also open the lab report template where I basically go over the basic things that you need to have for each of the sections of the lab report. All right, so this is kind of like a guide. After you know what it is, now you know what to put in there, kind of. I also have another one that's called the lab report rubric. Now this one is the one that you should follow uh, as you complete each section. You should grade yourself using this rubric because this is what I use to determine your grade for the lab report. So if I, if you use this and you make sure that you have each of these criteria in your lab report, you should be fine. So the lab report explanation will explain the logic of that session, what that session is all about. The lab report template will tell you what to write. And the lab report rubric will tell you if you wrote well after you did it. And for the purpose of this video, I'll also be using the lab report sample, which is on my website. One of my good students made this one, and it's not perfect, but it's a really good example of how to write a lab report. And so we're going to be following along with all these documents as we talk about in this lecture series. Now, the lab report has several parts, and I'm going to be using the rubric to show you those parts. First, you have a title. Uh, you also have a statement of the problem, right? You have a background. You have a hypothesis, materials and procedures, results, and then a conclusion. And you should also add your references in the bottom because it's always important to know where you got your sources from and if the sources are reliable or valid sources. So each of these areas ties in with one specific area of the scientific method. The statement of the problem is basically asking the question. It's identifying the problem that you're going to be talking about. The background is basically doing the observations that will help you understand the problem. The hypothesis is providing the answer for that. So that's the third step. Materials and procedures describe what you do next, which is the testing of that hypothesis. Then you're going to have the results, which is basically when you collect those, the, the results from the testing and you analyze these results, you understand these results, you present those results, you process those results. Then you have the conclusion session when you actually interpret those results and understand what it means and ties it in with society at whole. And then a lab report in its entirety is basically the communication stage, which is the last step where you're actually telling others about what you did. So good lab reports will be like that. So we have some overall rules that apply for all lab reports. So I want to start with those rules. Okay, first of all, your lab report will be graded for quality of grammar. Even though it's not technically what I'm grading for, if I can barely read it because it's very badly written, you will lose quality points. You see that listed on the rubric as the overall quality points. It's, it's worth 10 points in the rubric, all right? You also get another point for never using personal pronouns throughout the lab report. Here's the thing about writing in science. You do not write in, with personal pronouns. You don't say, we did this, I did this, whatever. You just say what you did. For example, instead of saying, 
uh, you should do this, just say, do this. Instead of saying, uh, you should... You, you now open the can. Just say, open the can. It sounds more professional. Likewise, if you say, don't say my hypothesis is. Just say, the, just state the hypothesis directly. There is no need to use personal pronouns. Get around them. Rewrite the sentences to avoid them entirely. As you read through your, through your thing, you should never have them there. Another thing you should have is make sure that every section that should that is there has a header or an appropriate title set for that section. Now, in some people group together the statement of the problem, the background, and the hypothesis all in a, in a heading that's called introduction. I won't mind if you do that, but I would prefer, now that you're learning how to write a lab report, that you actually separate them and have a heading for saying statement of the problem, one saying background, and one saying hypothesis. Once you're comfortable and you understand what you're doing, you can obviously group them all together in introduction and make sure the, the purpose or the statement of the problem is the first thing at the top, then hit the background, and at the end of the background, you put your hypothesis. You could do that as well. But since you have a point there that you have to have a header for every one of them, I suggest you include it. All right? Another thing that you need to know is that keep track of all the sources that you're going to be using throughout uh, this thing. Anything that you referenced, anything that you read, anything that you used to, to educate you on your research should eventually be listed in the references. Now, if you've learned how to use the MLA format or APA format to, to do it, great, do that. If not, there's plenty of websites out there where you can use the, to, to uh, help you create the uh, referencing for you. Just Google MLA format citations and you will find a website. We'll talk about that at the very end uh, when, if we have the time. And at the very bottom here, you have the rubric, you have how I score uh, this uh, method. Basically, I tell you all the points that you can possibly have divided by the total, and then you get a total score or a percentage of the points. Now, if you open the lab report template, it will have some extra stuff here. Sometimes when you're turning this in as like um, a whole packet, I like to have, instead of a title just on the top, to have the, the title be a page in itself. So I call it a title page. So you turn in a report with a title in the front, it has your name there as well, and all of that. And sometimes I also ask for an index so that it's is optional, of course, but you can have a page where you say, uh, okay, in page two, you will see the introduction. In page two, you will see the hypothesis, whatever. So you see all the pieces of the lab report and where you can find them. It makes it really neat. You should also, of course, put page numbers on your lab report so that it stays in order. And finally, uh, it's also optional to include, after the index, an abstract. Now, an abstract is basically a summary of your whole lab report and less than 400 words. It should range between 300 and 400 words and basically what you need to do there is do everything in 400 words. You tell them what you did, why you did it, the, 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 the background behind it, the hypothesis, uh, the results, the conclusions that you've drawn, everything in less than 400 words. Kind of like a getting your project and summarizing it so somebody can read it really quick and have a general idea about what you did. In my class, you'll get extra credit for doing this, and some students in advanced classes are required to do abstracts of other research papers uh, that other people have written as part of their uh, work for the class. So we'll talk more and more about the, how to do that, perhaps on a different video. Okay, on the next video, we're going to be talking about uh, the first part of writing the web report. We're going to start with the title and the statement of the problem. See you guys then.